All right, everyone. Good afternoon. I promised a 2.03 start time, and that's the time we're looking at right now. Thank you all so much for joining us for our virtual session today um, on our um, Sorry, I'm remembering to hit record. Our residential learning and university housing session this afternoon. I wanna give a special shout out to all of our accepted students and congratulate you all on your acceptance to Rowan and we do hope to see you on campus this fall. My name is Dr. Jessica Syed and I am the Senior Assistant Director of Admissions here at Rowan. I'm recognizing a lot of familiar names on this session that I've seen on other virtual sessions throughout the month already. So thank you guys so much for coming back and joining us, especially on such a beautiful Friday afternoon. Um, wherever you guys are, if you're in the southern New Jersey area, at least it is gorgeous outside. It's definitely in the 80s. Um, so hopefully some of you are maybe sitting outside on your laptops enjoying this session. And if not, I hope you guys are able to get outside for a little bit later today. Um, so I won't talk too long before I turn it over to our housing uh, presenters, but I just want to get everyone familiar with the platform if this is your first event with us today. So for our student attendees, we can't see you and we can't hear you, but hopefully you guys can see and hear us as well as the presentation. For you to be able to communicate with us, I want everyone to look to the bottom right of their screen in the Q&A section. So this is the way that you guys can answer or write in any questions that you have. Um, please feel free to use this time to your benefit. Ask any and all questions. This is a great time to hear firsthand from our housing office exactly what you want to know. Um, so we'll start with a brief presentation and then turn it over to our students for Q&A. Please feel free again to write in questions at any point throughout the session and we'll circle back to your question. Um, but as we get started, we would love to figure out who is in the room with us. So for students, we have close to 40 different attendees on the session right now. So I know on your end, you may feel like you're the only person in here, but you certainly are not. Um, I imagine we will be getting more and more students throughout the hour that we are together. So as you guys are getting in and getting settled, if you would like to introduce yourself in the Q&A box. So give us your name, where you're from, where you went to high school, let us know if you are a freshman or a transfer student. If you are accepted for the fall, we'll be seeing you on campus as part of our class of 2024. And in an earlier session today, which I know a couple of you guys were in, I asked for some cool outside activities that you were planning on doing. I had a couple of people going swimming later today, which I was really jealous about. Um, so let us know what you're doing today and tomorrow I think is also supposed to be pretty nice. Give us some cool outdoor activities. If you already answered my question about what you were doing outside, Give me a good Netflix show because I just finished Ozark and I need a recommendation. All right, so let's see who we have in the room. Uh, I'll shout some students out and continue to introduce yourself again throughout the session so we can get to know everyone as best we can. Um, so we have Anthony back in the house again today. Anthony was asking some awesome questions this morning on our virtual session. So thanks for coming back. I hope you were able to get outside for lunch time at least. Hi, I'm Mani. Good to see you again too. We have Craig from Maryland. Awesome. How's the weather in Maryland? Craig, you'll have to write in and let us know. I hope it's as beautiful as it is here in Jersey. Um, deposited and accepted. Congratulations. That's awesome. Um, Craig is going to form a band and join a Philly do-it-yourself team. That sounds pretty fun. Um, we have Alec from Livingston, who is an accepted freshman. My grandparents live in Livingston. So yeah, Essex County, Livingston in the house. Very cool. Um, hi to Kevin from Cherokee. Aaron from Marlton, another Cherokee student. Hi again, Tyler from Kingsway. Good to see you again. Go Dragons. Uh, we have Michael from Clearview, the Kingsway rival. Um, Craig said it's low 80s and sunny in Maryland. That's nice. Really nice. I think we're all getting very spoiled with this weather too. That's fantastic. Um, hi, Doug from Long Hill, class of 2021, going for a run later today. Cheyenne from Wayne. We have Gavin from Newark, Delaware. Uh, Jonathan from Freehold. It's growing to Point Pleasant. Nice. That's awesome. Stay away from people, but enjoy the beach. That's amazing. That sounds like so much fun. Uh, we have Sarah coming in for our 3 plus 4 program. Congratulations, super competitive program to get into. So that's great to see um, coming in from Middletown. Uh, we have Connor from Holland, Pennsylvania, accepted freshman Council Rock South, been there many times. Excellent, excellent. Alice from Cherry Hill, Livia from Bridgewater as a transfer student. Great. So we have students, it looks like a, a nice mix of freshmen and transfers and accepted students and incoming students really from all over the place. So I'm happy we have a couple out of staters on our hands today too. So um, great to see you guys again today. Feel free to keep introducing yourself. We'll shout students out throughout the session. Um, but at this point, I will turn it over to our residential learning and university housing presentation. Um, so Hannah, if you want to start us off, that would be great. Absolutely. It's always so fun to see where everyone is from. I just moved to Southern New Jersey in January and I'm from Hawaii. So I have yet to see anybody from my high school. 
pop on here, but maybe, maybe we'll hold out. Maybe we'll have an incoming student from Hawaii. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Hannah Moore. I am the Associate Director for Living, Learning, and Leadership Initiatives in Residential Learning and University Housing, which I get is a really long title. Um, as I said, I have been at Rowan since January, so I've been here for about five months, which is definitely not how I expected the first five months of my new job to go, but I am loving every minute, and I'm so excited to welcome our um, incoming students this fall, our accepted students, transfer students, students who are just checking us out. Um, I can't wait to walk through this presentation with you. Um, but you might notice that I defer to my colleagues, Katie and Shane, a little bit more since my five months here hasn't really given me all of the information and all the answers to your questions, but I'm very lucky that they're joining me on the call. Hi everybody, my name is Katie. I'm one of the area coordinators in the housing office. Um, so I oversee a group of our upper class halls. I'm um, also very excited to be here. Welcome to all of you and congratulations to those that are going to be joining us this fall. I'm very excited to talk to you a little bit more about housing um, and I will let our other colleague introduce himself as well. Hi everyone, my name is Shane Crowley. I'm one of the area coordinators. The area that I oversee is Holly Point Commons here at Rowan. Um, I am biased. I am a Clearview grad, so I would say go Pioneers and not Dragons. However, I would say uh, let's go Profs, and I'll settle for just Rowan in general. Um, but welcome, and we're excited to be spending some time with you today. Right, so we're going to have Katie go ahead and kick it off. We're going to be talking about living here, learning here, and thriving here, so the residential experience at Rowan. Yeah, so talking about um, essentially, I, I know coming in, one of the biggest transitions, especially for folks that are now going to be living on campus, is going from living at home, whatever that has looked like, to now being on campus for those that will be our residential students. Um, and we're going to get into a little bit later some of the different things that the university, specifically our department, offers in terms of programming and ways to get connected and be engaged. But if we jump to the next slide, I want to talk specifically about some of the different types of residence halls that we have. Um, you'll see traditional style and suite style, and you can see the different buildings and which category that they fall under. I think the, the easiest way to really differentiate between the two for our traditional style halls those are going to be our residence halls that have community bathrooms. And what I mean by that is these are bathrooms that are typically shared amongst sometimes anywhere from maybe 15 to 30 residents. And uh, these bathrooms, and you're probably like, wow, they're jumping right into it with talking about bathrooms. Um, these bathrooms are going to be consisting of a few things. So we have individual showers within um, our bathrooms, our restrooms. We have um, some buildings that might have separate sink rooms. Um, we're going to have individual stalls within our, our bathrooms, and those within our traditional style halls are going to be serviced by our housekeeping staff. And what I mean by that is we have folks here at the university that will go in um, and that will be cleaning those bathrooms daily, those bathrooms being the, the stalls, the showers, the sinks. Um, that's going to be our traditional style. The biggest difference with our suite style is that these are going to be bathrooms that are a little bit more private and shared between a smaller group of individuals. Um, typically, it's two to three bedrooms that have a conjoining um, bathroom, and the students, the residents, are responsible for cleaning that themselves. So usually you'll have one shower, um, one toilet, one sink, um, or two sinks sometimes. And again, it's the resident's responsibility to actually service and clean that bathroom, um, however often you, know, you, you want to. So, Something that we tell students is if you're someone who's very neat, very clean, you prefer for things to be cleaned kind of daily, um, one, thinking about, you know, who your roommate might be to make sure that that is a fit, but also our traditional style maybe is potentially a better fit um, with those being cleaned every day. If you want, you know, a bathroom that's a little bit more private and you don't have as many people accessing it, maybe the suite style would be a better fit for you. So those are typically our, our biggest differences between our traditional style and our suite style. Um, the only other thing that I would mention just in terms of um, one of the major differences is that Holly Point Commons is going to be our only building with air conditioning for first year students. Um, and that's just another important thing to point out when we look at the different styles within our residence halls. All 
All right, so I'm going to be talking about what it's like when we say learn here. So when you join us on campus this fall, whether you're an incoming first year student, again, whether you're um, considering Rowan as an option or whether you're a transfer student, you spend about 20% of your time in academic classes and the other 80% of the time you're with us. You get to hang out with us in the residence halls, um, in and around campus, at clubs and organizations, in the rec center. Um, and I know that we're all having a lot of thoughts about what this fall is going to look like with the national um, crisis and the pandemic. And we at Rowan are going to follow all of our state governance and guidelines, as well as the directions from the CDC and our university president. But we're moving forward and hoping that we open as typically as possible. Although when we think of the word typical, it probably has a new meaning moving forward. But the residential experience, it's filled with new opportunities, growth, and we have such a safe and vibrant community here at Rowan. You're gonna make friendships and memories and you're gonna gain skills that will help you throughout the rest of your life, whether that's learning how to do laundry for the first time on your own or writing a resume. Um, we do a lot of different things in our residential hall to help you not only learn at Rowan as a student, but help you be a better community member moving forward from when you leave us. One of the things that I oversee that I want to talk about is our living learning communities. So our living learning communities are themed housing options based on a shared interest, passion, or academic major. I know this is a lot of information on the slide, so a lot of you are probably like, oh my goodness, I can't read all this that quickly. I really encourage you to check out our website. Our website has so much informa information. It's www.rowan slash R-L-U-H, which stands for Residential Learning and University Housing. Um, you can see this information for the living learning communities, but when Shane was talking about our various halls, you can also click on the various first year halls and see everything from room dimensions to measurements of the windows if you are really excited about curtains that you want to bring to um, different ways that you can set up the furniture in the room, what furniture comes in the room. It's, it's a very detailed and impressive website, if I do say so myself, not that I had anything to do with making it. Um, but I really encourage you to check it out. So back to the living learning communities, we have 15. They are only for incoming first year students. So um, unless you are in the honors program, which is available for upper class students and for incoming transfer students, it is limited to first year students. Um, we have quite a few academic ones, such as math for our incoming math majors, um, pre-med if you are an incoming pre-med student. We also have honors, again, for the honors program if you've been accepted. Um, engineering for our engineering learning community students, which the deadline to apply is today, but I'll talk about that in a second. And we also have themed communities, which it doesn't matter what your major is incoming. If you share an interest in that community, you can pick to live there, such as our Thrive Living Learning Community, which is all about holistic health and wellness. If you want to set up an intramural club team together, go do yoga, grab a healthy meal at Glassworks and Holly Point. Um, there are, are options for a lot of different kinds of students. And what learning communities do is they pair learning in the classroom with learning outside of the classroom so that you have a small, close-knit community of people who share your interests and values already established. So it makes transitioning to college a little bit easier um, since you are in buildings with hundreds of students. Um, it's nice to have your own small, close-knit community. Um, the way to apply for these different living learning communities, um, many of them are on your housing application. So for those of you who haven't filled it out yet, I would encourage you to do so. But if you have filled it out yet, filled it out already, excuse me, there's a drop down menu for many of them that you can select right on your housing application, but a couple of them have a separate application and that's mentioned on the living learning community how to apply. Um, so for ascend, there is a separate application process for engineering, there's a separate application process and I did say the deadline is today. So if we have any of you that are incoming engineering students interested in that, um, the information is on this slideshow and on the website. For my honors friends, if we have any um, incoming first year students in the honors program, you are automatically placed in the living learning community. So there's no separate application. There's nothing you have to do. Your placement is on automatic. Unless you don't want to be placed there, then please reach out to me. Um, and then for impact, that's another one that has a direct email address for a faculty member who can help you with that. So lots of different options, lots of different things going on. I really encourage living learning communities. They're a great experience that again, just helps have a small close knit community already established right from the get go. I wanna talk about our staff a little bit. So this lovely, beautiful group of people, we have 150 RAs on campus. 
15 assistant resident directors, 15 graduate resident directors, five area coordinators, two of whom are joining us today, three leadership staff, and one you. Those are a lot of fancy names and titles, many of which you might not recognize, but at the end of the day, we are all here for you. We love our jobs because we get to support you. When you join us on campus, you will have an RA who is an upper class student mentor and leader in the same hall as you, available to answer any and all questions that you have. And the people that work for our office, honestly, it's like, it's like a family. So we wanna be your family. We wanna create the home away from home for you. And we're a really fun group of people if you can't tell by this next slide. I had a lot of fun picking out the pictures for this. So those are some of our amazing student staff on picture day, having a lot of fun, looking really great in their t-shirts. So we've talked about Thrive a little bit, which is a university initiative focused on holistic wellness. Um, and we, we really want you to thrive with us here on campus. Um, whether you're tie-dyeing t-shirts or heading to a hall intramural kickball game, hosting a Netflix movie night, if we're watching someone I saw on the comments is watching the originals, great show. If you're looking for someone to binge watch wish together, you can do that in the residence halls, or you're grabbing dinner, you're heading to one of our programs, petting our therapy dogs. There's so much going on at Rowan all the time. Last year, we hosted over 750 programs. I had a grand total attendance of over 11,000 students. So there's always something going on, whether or not you feel like it is. Sometimes it's kind of intimidating to put yourself out there and leave the comfort of your residence hall room that you've nested and made beautiful with all the different pictures and posters that you decorate your room with. Um, but at the end of the day, your college experience is what you make of it. So you need to take the initiative to put yourself out there, try something new, sign up for that club or organization, attend our info fair and look at all of the different kinds of ways that you can get involved and talk to your RA about the different programs that they have going on every week for an op opportunity for you to get more involved. Yeah, one thing, um, Hannah, too, that I would love to mention, uh, especially with that, that last slide is, um, that's actually one of our org fairs here on campus. It's not a, an event that is specifically sponsored by our department, um, but what happens is the RAs on campus, our resident assistants, oftentimes use it as an opportunity to take their residents out and kind of get them exposed to the different things um, that the university has to offer. And I think that's one thing to be really mindful of with their residential experience is, while it's absolutely something where, you know, you're creating a family amongst your, your floor mates and um, those that you're living with, it's also an opportunity where your resident assistant is such a resource and su such an asset to be able to take you out into the greater community and expose you to all of the different things that are happening here um, so one thing to really be kind of mindful and excited for if you choose to come to Rowan and be living here on campus is that um, you're not just going to have, you know, an RA that helps you with any residence hall, but that's also going to be a person that really helps you get connected um, and thrive here kind of as a part of the greater Rowan community. So thank you to Hannah and Shane for talking about some of our great opportunities. Um, I hope that you all will take this opportunity to join us on campus. Um, but to do that, I'm going to talk a little bit about how to actually navigate the housing process um, so you understand how to do your housing application and all that really important information. Um, so the first kind of step in this is going to be um, that you need to make sure you have your housing application completed online. Um, we do have a mandatory housing waiver. Um, so some of our students are required to live on campus. Um, so your two options are either going to be doing your housing application or submitting your mandatory housing waiver. Um, if you have a certain number of credits, if you have over 58 credits, um, if you are due to current circumstances with COVID, we know there's a lot going on. So if you are choosing to commute um, within a 40 mile radius and living with a parent or guardian, you are also able to submit a, a mandatory housing waiver. So there are some exceptions to that mandatory housing policy that we do have. But for the most part, most of our students who have under 58 credits are going to be living on campus. Um, so if you do need to submit your mandatory housing waiver, you can go ahead and do that online, um, but otherwise you're going to be doing your housing application um, so that we know that we need to uh, sign up for housing. Uh, we want to make sure as well that you do have your application in by the deadline. So all of our application pieces, those are all going to be due by June 7th. 
So that's going to include our actual housing application online. That's also going to include our roommate matching process online. Um, so if you are trying to match with the roommate, um, if there's somebody that you met or somebody you know who is coming in, you're going to need to do that by June 7th as well. Um, the other piece of that too is if you have any um, accommodation need that is going to impact your housing placement or selection, that portion you're also going to need to have in by June 7th. Um, an example of that sometimes is say you need an air conditioning accommodation, um, you have any special needs for your housing that is going to have to be submitted by June 7th as well. So all those things should be submitted by that time period so we can make sure that your housing placement um, is accurate for your circumstances and we have you available on our list. If there is somebody that you want to live with, um, you can, like I had mentioned, uh, complete that roommate matching process. Um, that is all available online. Um, there is also, Hannah mentioned our website. Um, our website is a great resource for all this information we're going over, including a video um, where you can actually go and watch the video. It'll walk you through the entire roommate matching process. Um, so if you're confused or don't really know what to do, you can go ahead um, and fill that all out um, while you're watching that video. Um, more information about the mandatory housing policy and things are also available on our website, um, as well as our contact information, which we'll go over towards the end too. But if you have any questions during these processes, there are so many options for you to contact our staff to help out. Um, so if there's somebody you want to live with, um, you can complete the roommate matching process. Um, if not, you'll be uh, placed with a roommate during our placement process. So if you don't have anybody that you know that you definitely want to live with, no, no big deal at all. We'll help match you um, with somebody to, to live in your housing, um, and we will take care of that for you. The room, uh, the room assignment process will be taking place in June. So once all of these, um, all the applications are in, our staff will be doing the housing, um, the housing process, and your assignment will be emailed to you around mid-July. Um, so there is a little bit of time just so we can make sure we review everything um, for the applications we receive, and then that'll all be communicated to you via email. Um, so make sure you keep an eye on your own email address. Um, if you have not yet logged into your own email, make sure you set that up because all the information will be communicated to your own email address. Um, and then the only other step after that, once you receive your housing assignment, will be getting ready for move-in. Um, more information about how to actually physically move in will come later in the summer, but the move-in dates to make sure you have on your calendar are going to be August 28th through the 30th. Um, so just make sure you're aware of those dates and more information will come about that. And then the other piece you want to familiarize yourself with too is going to be reviewing what you can and cannot bring. We do have some prohibited items. Um, those all come from the New Jersey State Fire Marshal and our housing policies to make sure that you are safe and secure while you're living on campus. Um, some common prohibited items include things like candles, um, extension cords that don't have a surge protector built into it, things like that. Um, so there is a whole list and some suggestions also if you're just wondering what to bring or what not to bring. Um, if you don't really know where to start, all that information again is available on our website. There's a whole exhaustive list, um, so it's really helpful to look at that just to give you an idea of what you should, what you might want to pack while you come to campus. Um, so you can make sure you can make it look really pretty like some of these pictures um, and you can settle in while also making sure you're safe in your residence hall. So those are all the things that we have. Um, I know there's a lot of questions going through, so I can turn it back over to Jessica. Great, thanks guys. Um, that was a ton of information and it looks like we have a lot of questions already that have been coming through. So I'm gonna do my best to make sure we hit everybody's question today. If we don't get to your question or you're leaving the session and you're thinking about something later on tonight and you have another question for us, reach out, the contact information will keep this slide up for you guys housing questions at rowan.edu. Um, before we jump into questions, I do want to give some quick admissions housekeeping. I know we have both prospective and accepted students on this call. So this doesn't pertain to our prospective students. who are still just thinking about college yet. But for our accepted students, to be able to move forward with the housing process, you have to make sure you are deposited and have confirmed your enrollment. So that means you need to make sure that you're definitely attending Rowan this fall and that you've let us know. Best way to do that is log into your applicant status page and you'll reply to your offer of admission. That's it's a three step process. So the first thing you'll do is log in, you'll confirm that offer of admission, and then the third step is to actually submit that $400 deposit. There is not a separate deposit for housing, so whether you are commuting or living on campus, that deposit fee is exactly the same for everybody. Um, if you are having difficulty or need financial assistance with that financial deposit right now, please let us know. We are happy to work with students. We recognize that this is a lot of money anyways for many families, let alone during a pandemic where a lot of families' financial situations have certainly changed in the past couple of months. So you can always email admissions 
at rowan.edu, or you could email housingquestions at rowan.edu and they could get in touch with me and we can take care of that deposit for you. So you do wanna make sure that you have deposited, confirmed your enrollment before you can submit your housing application. Once you do deposit, you will wanna wait 48 business hours to start taking your next steps as an incoming student. So one of those steps again is applying for housing if you are choosing to live on campus, but you'll first need to set up your network account. So you'll need to make sure your row and email address is working, you have your password, you know how to log in, and then you can start moving forward with submitting that housing application. So sometimes students get stuck on that step. Again, just reach out to us and we are more than happy to help you through that process. All right, and hopefully that clears some stuff up. Um, our deadline for admission has been pushed back to June 1st as well. So you guys do still have some time. Um, just to remind everyone, we still have about two weeks left until we need that deposit. So again, just to be mindful, um, and hopefully that answered a couple of the questions coming in. All right, so let's start with our first question, which I think is a great question, and this is from Douglas. Um, I think this question really demonstrates how different high school is than college. And Douglas wants to know, are you allowed to invite friends over to your room? Yeah, I can take that one. Great question, Douglas. So yes, you absolutely can have um, friends over, family over, whatever that looks like. I won't go um, too much into detail, but we do have something called roommate agreements. And what those are, are basically a document that roommates will work on and they agree on pretty much everything that you could think of when living with someone. So what time is bedtime gonna be? You know, when do we wanna get up in the morning? Um, how often can we have guests over? You know, do we have to give each other notice if we're gonna have guests over? Can a guest spend the night? Um, a lot of different things that the roommate agreement will capture. Now specifically to the question of guests. Um, Rowan does have a guest policy, and that policy basically, again, kind of centers on an agreement between the two roommates, number one, that you're okay with having a guest specifically spending the night, and then also that there is a max amount of time that that guest can be spending um, the, the night consecutively. Um, so that's just really important to understand. No, you can't have someone move in with you um, off the books and just stay with you all semester. That's, that's certainly not um, permitted by the housing contract. And then likewise, you do have to talk to your roommate and make sure that they're okay with uh, you having a guest over. Um, and that's a, another awesome thing that the RA can really help with in kind of having that conversation and navigating some of those conversations if you're not sure um, how often you want guests to be over. Great, thanks Shane. Um, we had another question, I think Shane, I'm blaming this one on you because you started out talking about bathrooms. Can you just go over um, what types of bathrooms are cleaned by students, what bathrooms are cleaned by our housekeeping staff, our bathrooms cleaned daily? Just give us the bathroom rundown again. Yeah, the who knew I'd be talking about bathrooms so much. So <laughs> uh, we have our traditional style bu uh, buildings and our suite style. So our traditional style are the ones that are going to have more of the community. Um, style bathroom. And again, just as a reminder, that's going to be a shared um, kind of stall and, and also um, shower as well as sinks. Those are going to be cleaned daily by our housekeeping staff. Um, I did see the question come through, you know, are those cleaned once a day? Typically, they are cleaned once a day. And the nice thing, too, about our housekeeping staff is that we do have folks that are on call. So if there was to be some type of spill, um, if for whatever reason, maybe one of uh, the showers wasn't working, Typically, the way that the building is set up, um, almost all of our traditional styles, you would be able to access another bathroom if needed. Um, but those are going to be cleaned once a day. And if there were any type of facilities emergencies, you have on call staff who could come out later in the day to uh, assist with that. Again, just as a reminder for our suite style, those are going to be your own responsibility when it comes to cleaning. So um, we don't have housekeeping staff that come in and clean those. Of course, that happens throughout the summer and preparing for you to arrive. But then once you move in, it's your responsibility along with your roommates. Um, and that, again, is a, an example of what the roommate agreement discusses, how often do we want to clean? So that's, that's literally a question that gets asked, and the roommates will agree, hey, we're going to clean the bathroom every day, or we're going to clean it once a day, um, or we're going to be responsible for cleaning up after ourselves. Um, so those are all things that will be captured within the roommate agreement as well. Perfect. So Anthony knows that he can't choose where he wants to live, but are students able to choose between the traditional, um, the suite style, residence halls? Do they have any choice in the selection process or how does that work? 
Yeah, I can take this one. So when you are filling out your housing application, um, what you you pretty much are going to have an opportunity to identify um, if financial need is a factor um, in your housing in your housing decision in your housing placement. Um, there is a difference um, in pricing in some of our housing options. Like Shane had mentioned, Holly Point Commons is one of our newer residence halls and does have air conditioning, so the pricing is a little bit different. Um, all of our pricing rates are all available online. Um, so if you're also curious as to what those rates are, they are all available on our website. Um, but so if finances um, are an impact for you, you can go ahead and ind indicate that on the housing application. Um, other than that, if there also is a medical need or accommodation that's going to impact your housing placement, you can also indicate that. Um, otherwise, it is kind of a randomized process of, of placing you within the residence halls. Um, there is an opportunity um, for a room change process if you would really want to be in one particular building. Um, there is an opportunity to go ahead and indicate your preference of, if available, I would like to potentially move to a different building. However, it does just depend upon availability, depends on, on numbers and where our vacancies are, um, which does change. So we are able to help you with a room change or a room swap if you and somebody else want to swap your housing assignment, we can help you out with that. Um, again, like, you know, but you can always reach out to housing questions, the email address is up on the screen. Um, however, a kind of in like the primary first round, you're going to go ahead and submit your housing application. You can indicate some of those factors. And then from there, it is just kind of like a randomized placement um, based on some other criteria. Thanks, Katie. So Tyrone asked if a student has special requirements or needs accommodations, how do they go about making sure that you guys have that information and that they are placed appropriately? I can touch on that too if you guys want. Um, so if you have any accommodation need, you're going to go ahead and submit any paperwork, um, potentially a doctor's note, um, any paperwork you might need to the office, the um, Academic Success Center. Um, so they are another office that we have on campus. Um, their information is on the website, but feel free to reach out to our office and we can help connect you. Um, and what you would do is submit all your paperwork through their office, um, through their forms, and then they will notify our office of your any, any accommodation need that you might have. So that's why that June 7th deadline is super important um, because they will communicate all those needs to our office. So if we don't have that information in um, by June 7th, we um, might have to shift around your accommodation needs or we might have to work with you later in the summer as things become available. So definitely make sure if you have any needs, you're getting that stuff in as soon as possible so we can work with you and you'll do it all through their office and their office will work with us. So again, that's the Academic Success Center. Um, and also you can contact our office and we could help connect you if you're looking for some help in that process. I just wanna add on a little bit to Katie's point, um, specifically make sure that when you're submitting your documentation, you are submitting your documentation to the Academic Success Center. Um, there are a lot of different privacy laws and regulations when it comes to medical documentation. And we just wanna make sure that it's protected and it's sent to the right office. So while we're happy to connect you, that documentation does not come directly to our office. It needs to go through the Academic Success Center. So we're happy to connect you, like Katie said, but please make sure you're just submitting it in the correct way. So Anthony has a question again about our living learning communities. Hannah, if you could just review um, the different communities that we have, especially the ones that are non-major specific. We do have a few students also asking when will they hear back if they've applied to live in a certain learning community and specifically how do you apply for that Thrive learning community? Okay, I will try to answer all of those different questions. Okay, so we have, we have 15 different living learning communities and I can, if we want, pull that slide back up, but it's also on the website, and I skipped, there we go. Okay, so I'll briefly go through them. Again, I would encourage you to go on the website because you can read a little snippet about what the community is about. Um, Ascend is an academic um, incoming program. It is special admit and they reach out to their students directly. Computer science is for incoming computer science majors. Engineering is for incoming engineering students. Our first generation living learning community is for any student who's incoming and who identifies as a first generation student. What that typically means is that you are the first one in your family to go to an institution of higher education, but there are a lot of different definitions to it. So if you just feel like you need additional support coming in, you don't have a lot of experience with college or institutions of higher education, it might be a good support network for you. Thrive is our living learning community that's focused on holistic wellness and that is not major specific, so that's open to all incoming first year students. Global, also open to all incoming first year students. That's a really unique opportunity where we put both international and domestic students together in a very small community that's very close knit in a house off campus. 
um, not off campus, it's on campus, but right next to Holly Point. Um, so it's a very unique opportunity. So if you're interested in learning about people from different cultures, if you're interested in having different conversations, learning from one another, that might be a really good um, opportunity for you. Honors is limited to students who are accepted to the honors program. Impact is for incoming students who are education majors who are of a marginalized identity, typically men. Um, so it's a very niche group and it is, uh, they reach out to you. Leadership is open to all incoming first year students. It's not major dependent. LGBTQIA open to all incoming first year students, not major dependent. Math is for our incoming math majors. Pre-med is for our incoming pre-med majors, or if you want to go that track, maybe you haven't declared it yet, you're an incoming bio major, but you're interested in going that route, might be an option for you. Recovery, open to all incoming first year students who identify as in recovery. Um, social justice, open to all incoming first year students, not major dependent. And writing arts is open to all incoming first year students, typically who are a writing arts major, but they do open it up for people who are just interested in that um, as well. So. There's also the separate applications tab and the housing application tab. I think I'm going to touch on the engineering. If you've applied to the engineering living learning community, that's all you need to do. There isn't another application as long as you filled that out. Today is the deadline. If you would like to see if you're admitted to that, we just get the list from my colleague, Dr. Jess Everett, but their email um, email address is on this slide and also on the website. So Dr. Jess Everett is who you would want to email just to make sure that your application has been received. Um, I think I touched on that, which ones were major dependent, which ones were not major dependent, how you apply, right, on the housing applications. So, like I said, some of them have separate applications. They're listed on this slide, but for computer science, first generation, thrive, global, leadership, LGBTQIA, math, recovery, social justice, and writing arts, so there's 10 of them, it's on the housing application. I believe it's question number 14. It's a drop down menu that says, please indicate your preference for a living learning community. The first one is, I'm not interested, which you can select, and then you can select from the list below. Did I get everything, JP? You did. Okay. I'll stop combining so many questions into one. <laughs> I just wanna make sure I answered everything. Yeah, that was impressive. That was really good. <laughs> All right, here's a quick and easy one, I think. So we've had, we have had a few questions about the price and if there's price differences depending on the dorm. So you don't have to rattle off the prices for everything, but where would a student go to find that information? A uh, student could go to our website and uh, typically the price uh, difference is usually, uh, the biggest differences will be if a student has a single that's go going to be more expensive than a double um, for the semester and then for the overall academic year, as well as Holly Point Commons being um, just a little bit more expensive than our other traditional halls. Thanks, Shane. All right, so we have a couple questions about air conditioning, and it may be the beautiful 80 degree weather today that making everyone think about the AC, but what buildings have air conditioning? If a building does not have AC, can a student bring their own unit? Yeah. So Holly Point Commons has air conditioning. Our other first year residence halls do not have air conditioning. Um, no, you cannot bring your own air conditioning unit to um, any of our buildings, obviously including Holly Point. Um, the reason for that, just so that students know, is um, really around kind of like electrical surges and how the buildings were designed and the amount of um, voltage that they can actually be receiving. So. Uh, we do encourage students to bring fans and uh, they're allowed to have fans either in the window or standing fans um, and I promise I don't say this just because I, I work for the university. Um, I also was a student here and I was a resident assistant in Chestnut um, which does not have air conditioning. I was on uh, the third floor and um, early in the semester it was a little bit warmer and then in the fall semester and then kind of later in the spring semester it was a little bit warmer um, but truly outside of, you know, those, those first couple weeks and last couple weeks, um, it's, it's honestly not all that bad at all, um, especially when you have your fan, you have windows open. Um, and I'll, I also you know, say this to students a lot. Um, some of our buildings have different lounges that might be air conditioned. And then there are so many places on campus that students can be going to um, and that students will go to. So, a lot of times folks are rarely in their room. They're out at the rec center or at the library, um, in the student center, even there studying you know, outside, all these different places. Um, so typically you know, the, the air conditioning, um, I think it's a scary thing for students you know, before they actually get here thinking like, oh, is it gonna be really hot? 
Um, but, but honestly, most students wind up saying it's, it's really not that big of a, a factor. Yeah, and for our student attendees, just to be mindful that this week that we're in right now is commencement week for our students. So you guys would have been moved off campus a week ago already. I know we are on a different schedule than high school. Um, high school, you guys are in school much later than we are. So I know I still have flannel sheets on my bed, and it hasn't been warm really up until today. So <laughs> even in the spring semester, um, I think for the most part, you guys really are okay, even if you don't have air conditioning in your specific housing. All right, so here's a good question that I actually don't know the answer to, so I'm curious to hear. Is housing available during breaks? So that could include winter break, spring break, and then even summer housing opportunities. Yeah, so we so we do have those um, options available. Um, so we so during some breaks, we simply are open. Um, we don't really close. So for things like Thanksgiving, spring break, um, you know, it'll just kind of be standard. Um, you don't have to move all your belongings out. You can be here. Our halls are essentially open. Winter break does function pretty much the same way. Um, you would remain in your same assignment for the fall and spring semester, so you are able to stay um, in your in your assignment for the winter term as well for winter break. Um, typically, in our residence halls, you would just notify us of your circumstances of why you might need to be here on campus, um, just so that we are aware. Um, our staffing looks very different. Some of our like like gourmet dining, our dining options are very are much smaller during things like winter break. So we typically want to know just who will be around during things like that, just so that we are aware and we can help um, make sure we connect you with any resources you might need over something that's a little bit longer, like winter break. Um, for the summer term, um, we do offer summer housing. Um, currently, like this summer, it is in Rowan Boulevard. It's in one of our apartment complexes. Um, and typically that is available at a daily rate. Um, so your housing contract will run from August when you move in um, through the end of the, of the year in May is the length of your housing contract. Once that housing contract ends in May, if you need to be here from May through August when the normal term starts again, you would apply for summer housing and then you would pay a different daily housing rate for summer housing. So um, for all intents and purposes of a shorter answer, we have housing options available pretty much year round and then some of those specifications will come um, and we'll communicate all that to you depending on your needs and the time of year. It looks like we have a few questions from incoming accepted students who have been trying to work on their housing applications and they're running into some issues. So we could do some quick troubleshooting or at least provide a resource for students to go to if they're having trouble filling out their housing application, if they made a mistake and they wanted to resubmit their housing application, what is the best thing for students to do if they are having trouble with the application? Go ahead, Hannah. Oh, okay. I'll, I'll chime in, but then you can take over, Shane, just in case. So if you're having trouble with the housing application or you're running into issues with selecting a roommate, honestly, the best resource for you is housing questions at rowan.edu. Um, you can take screenshots of the, the issue that you're encountering, uh, but you can submit it there. We have a really dedicated team of um, professional and graduate staff who are answering these questions um, as soon as they can when they get to them. Um, but they're, they're a really fantastic resource, and it's great to be able to see what technological issues you are encountering, which is, again, why taking screenshots is super helpful for our team to help troubleshoot. Sometimes it's just an issue of with roommate selection, you're trying to select someone, but they haven't completed the housing application yet, so you wouldn't be able to select them. Um, but sometimes there is an actual technological issue. So if you are having issues, email housingquestions.rowan.edu. The question about can you edit your housing application, you can edit your housing application up until the deadline, so it's due June 7th, so you can go back in and edit it if you want to change, um, you know, some information, that you want to add a living learning community if you're interested in preferencing it. Um, you can do that up until June 7th. It still keeps your original submission deadline, so if you completed it way back when in April, it'll still keep that as the deadline in which, uh, the date in which you submitted it, but you can edit it up until the deadline. Did I get everything, Shane? Can you guys go over, again, the roommate selection process, whether a student has a roommate in mind or if they are getting a random roommate, how does that work? Me, Shane? Yeah, Katie, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> for a second. <laughs> it's so hard to find the mute button again once my mouse turns off. 
Um, so for roommates, um, if you do have somebody in mind that you are going to um, be matching with, um, again, there is a video available on our website that will like literally walk you step through step through that process. Um, there is a thing that you uh, can fill out to mutually match um, with a roommate that you would like to room with. And that's, that's pretty much it for that process. It's not a very long process. Um, it's just making sure that, that you all are mutually matching each other so we have that match. And then we can try our hardest, depending on availability, to match you together in the same bedroom or the, or the same space. Um, if you do not have a roommate in mind, that's totally fine. There are some questions in the housing application that ask some kind of just general questions. Um, and, you know, we, we do try to, to see if there's some, some good fits or some of it is kind of randomized. Um, but I think the thing that I would mention as well with roommates is that um, we do have staff available pretty much 24 seven. So if you are having an issue with your roommate or you don't know how to talk to your roommate, maybe you've never had a roommate before, that's totally okay. Um, you will have a resident assistant um, who's an undergraduate student available on your floor that they are trained to kind of mediate any conflict or thing that might come up. So um, if you don't have a roommate in mind and you're really nervous about having a roommate, that's totally natural, um, but we do have staff available um, and they are trained to kind of help navigate you through that process. So um, there are some questions on the housing application that you can answer um, if you don't have a roommate in mind. Um, and then our staff is also available when you're physically here to help walk you through any concerns you might have as well. We have about 10 minutes left and I want to quickly transition to opportunities for students as upperclassmen. We had some questions about living on or on off campus rather as an upperclassman student after their first year and what do those different opportunities look like? Yeah, so once you, uh, once you hit that kind of 58 credit mark, um, you are not required to live on campus. Um, so after that point, there are some other exceptions as well. Um, if you are married, uh, if you live within 40 miles of campus um, and you have parental or guardian consent, um, that whole kind of list of, of those exceptions to the mandatory housing waiver is on our website. Um, but typically the most like black and white and frequent one is that 58 credit mark. Um, so for your freshman and sophomore year, you're most likely living on campus. Um, once you are no longer a freshman student credit wise, um, once you're considered a sophomore, junior or senior, um, you are able to apply for housing in, in most of our other buildings, um, which are, are pr pretty much all apartment buildings. Um, some other residence halls, um, Holly Point sometimes is available for upper class students as well. Um, so when you're applying for that, uh, one of our buildings in particular is junior and senior only, and that is 220 Rowan Boulevard. Again, all of these distinctions are available on our website, um, but pretty much all of our apartment buildings will be available to our upper class students. Um, it does depend on just things like availability, accommodation needs, um, and things like that, um, because we do have a variety of different types of apartment buildings um, that are located on campus. So some of them are doubles, some of them are singles. Um, they're all very different. So I would recommend uh, taking a look through our website so you can see all of those distinctions. Um, but once you hit 58 credits, um, you do not are not required to live on campus. Once you're no longer a freshman, um, you are able to live in some of our more apartment buildings. So I hope that answers the question. Um, but I know that there's like a lot of distinctions with our buildings. So if you want like very specific information about the amenities, how they're set up, um, who it's available to, all of that is listed in detail on our website as well. And Emmanuel had just asked about cooking in their apartment and that would be a great place to look online at that housing brochure and see the different options and how um, each different style of housing that we have on campus lays that out. Yes, all of our apartments do have kitchens in them. So as an upper classroom, that would certainly be an option if that's something that you wanted to do. I know when I was in college, I never wanted to cook anything. Having a meal plan was just amazing. So I'm always impressed when college students want to cook for themselves. I still don't want to cook for myself. Um, all right, we have a quick and easy question also from Emmanuel. Is there Wi-Fi on campus in our housing? It looks like that's a yes. That was a quick, <laughs> a quick and easy question. Didn't even have to unmute. <laughs> Perfect. Um, it looks like we have made it through the bulk of these questions, which is fantastic. Um, again, if we are missing anything, if you ask something specific that we didn't get to, I will point everyone back to housingquestions at rowan.edu. But in the last few minutes that we have before we end our session today, I'm going to ask our housing office to give our incoming students a piece of advice when it comes to living on campus, and then we'll sign off from there. Piece of advice, that's a great question. Um, I think my best piece of advice to incoming first year students 
would be to it would be in regarding roommates because we talk a lot about roommates i think there's a lot of nerves when it comes to living with other people a lot of expectations um people who seem to think everybody else has picked a roommate and they haven't found a roommate yet and um my piece of advice is you know it's not about where you live we've we've talked a lot about the different kind of buildings ac no ac suite versus traditional it's not about where you live it's about who you live with and at the end of the day you don't have to be best friends with your roommate if 10 years from now you're not in each other's weddings, that's okay. You don't have to like who you live with, you just have to respect one another. And sometimes the best roommates were not best friends in high school. You are matched via our housing application and you can live together for the next four years or more, however long you're living with us at Rowan. But I think that's my best piece of advice is, you know, have an open mind when it comes to roommates and remember that even if everybody else seems to be best friends with their roommate and have matching footy pajamas that they wear and different things like that. It's okay if you're not, as long as you can live and respect one another, that's the most successful roommate relationship we could ask for. One thought that I had was very similar to Hannah's. Um, the other thought that I had, my piece of advice would also just be to get out of your room and get involved. Um, there are so many different opportunities to get involved on campus. It's one of my favorite parts about living on campus. Um, some of my best memories and things that I took away from my college experience was the experiences outside of the classroom um, and the relationships that I built with those in my hall. Um, and so I, I was an RA when I was an undergrad. Um, and so like that's always an option for you if you're interested in that. Um, but if not, we have things called hall councils in all of our buildings. So if you're interested in maybe helping out with some large scale programming, maybe um, taking on some advocacy for your hall, um, or just kind of being involved. It's, it's kind of like a student government within each of your halls. Um, and so that's always an opportunity in your inside of your residence hall. There are also, um, like you saw in the picture of the organization fair, there are so many different orgs that you can get involved with. So um, my piece of advice to living on campus would be to just get involved, go out to events and programs. Your resident assistants will also program within the building, as well as have large scale programs throughout campus. So just get out of your room, um, get involved. It's the best way to make relationships um, so that hopefully you and your roommate can do those things together. But to Hannah's point, maybe you and your roommate do not share common interest and that's okay there are people on campus who do have the same interests as you and you can find those people so just make sure you get involved um, and reach out to your RA or any anybody on staff and we can always help connect you with something you might want to get involved in yeah wow y'all had two good ones I think um, similar to what Hannah was saying I would I would say that in addition to your roommate not having to be your best friend um, there's also like you're going to find a best friend and there's going to be people that maybe live right next to you, and that might be who you room with the next year. So definitely not getting you know overly concerned with who is my roommate going to be, because the reality is at the end of the day, like that that's a place that you put your head at night to sleep. Um, and I think you know, in my opinion, if you're doing the whole college thing right, if you're out all the time and you're experiencing all that the campus has to offer. And uh, I oftentimes will see you know two two people that were roommates that got along well, but ultimately realized that the two rooms over from them, like they had a better connection with those folks and that's who they wound up living with. And um, I think that's one thing. And the other piece that uh, I would say is your RA is a resource and your RA is someone who cares about you, um, is going to kind of pave the way to create opportunities for you. I know a couple of folks asked questions about how much does housing cost? And I always tell residents, um, you can have your housing paid for if you're an RA. And that's, you know, that's just one example of how getting involved can be so beneficial. So again, not, not staying in your room all the time, but really going out and um, getting connected and getting plugged in and um, thriving on campus, I think leads to so many doors that are going to be opened up. That was great. Thank you guys, Shane. Beautiful advice to end on. That was fantastic. Thank you guys so much for joining us this afternoon. I want to give a special thank you again to our incoming and prospective students for carving out this past hour to spend time with us. Now, I hope everyone is able to get outside and enjoy the sunshine for a little bit. But if you guys do have any follow-up questions, please email housingquestions at rowan.edu. Congratulations again to all of our incoming students, and we hope to see you on campus soon. Have a great weekend. Bye, everyone. Bye.